we're going to look at the Blood Angels Storm Raven. Uh, here's what we're going to look like when it's all done. Um, showing you with a couple other my Blood Angels models. And uh, first off, I'm going to do a little bit of magnet magnetization. I magnetized these guns up here, as well as these side turrets. Um, so I'll just quickly show you that. So this is the bottom of that turret. And uh, what it does, um, there's a spot here, there's a, a rod that goes across and connects both the guns so they rotate together. I'm going to make them fixed, and so what I did is I put an 1 8 of an inch hole just below that. And I've got this rod magnet here. Um, a shorter magnet would have worked as well, but this one here uh, is going to do what I need. Okay, so now this is that, that rod that goes all the way across. It's glued in place. There's a square peg at the end of it. And uh, so I'm going to use that and this to uh, to prevent my gun from rotating. Um, so then I drilled a 1 8 of an inch hole all the way through the bottom, uh, in this case the plasma cannon. And this is the, the shield on the outside of the gun, and there's just a 1 8 of an inch magnet glued on there. Nothing fancy. And the way it all lines up, that rod magnet goes through, um, and that fits on there perfectly. There's a couple little notches on there that make sure it lines up, and uh, there we go. So these won't rotate up and down uh, anymore, but um, I can swap them out, and uh, this will still rotate around uh, the turret. Okay, so uh, painting it wise, what I did is I spray painted everything red, tried to give it an even base coat. Then I used my airbrush to uh, to spray over everything red as well. Uh, my camera doesn't like red, lots of red, so I apologize if some of these don't look very good. But basically, uh, spray painted or uh, airbrushed everything a nice even coat of red, and then um, tried to do some highlights here. You can kind of see it uh, with a bit of a fleshy color. Um, just along the raised edges. And then I did a little red spray over top just to uh, temper that down a little bit. And I also tried to do a little bit of dark stuff in and around here. Um, again, hard to tell, uh, but just a, enough to give it a bit of variation so it doesn't look like it's one solid color. Okay, and uh, a bit of black on the areas that are going down to black. So the um, the engines here did some streaks along the, the wings um, and the thrusters, that sort of stuff. Uh, just uh, some black bits. Those are going to be mostly silver. Um, but I uh, figure, you know, sort of the, the burnt kind of look going around there and then some of the black coming out where these rockets would have come out and that sort of thing. As well as some uh, on the inside of that turret. Okay, so moving back over to my painting table, um, working on uh, silvers here. So this is just a, a Reaper. Um, oh, I'm going to see that in a second. I have the the paint for you. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't think I started yet. Okay, and there's the driver. I'm painting him uh, separately, and then he's going to go in. So this is all glued together as one piece. Here we go. Shadowed steel um, and all the metal bits. And I'm also doing a little bit of a dry brush of vomit brown just to pick up these uh, these sharp edges here. Because the airbrush uh, is good for giving you nice um, smooth tones, but it's not good for the, the sharp edges. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going through over the panel lines uh, with this red ink. So it's actually a very dark red, kind of like a scab red, but much uh, thinner. So it's a Reaper red ink. Um, you could also use like a Bata black wash. That would probably be good as well. Uh, bowel red might not be quite as dark as you want. Um, there you can see the, those engines are all silver. So all of these panels got a nice bit of ink in there just to help bring things out. Um, these ones here are magnetized. Uh, and uh, if you recognize the parts, there's just a plastic panel that I put over that top there to cover up some of the holes. And uh, that's how I, I made these fit with, uh, with the other uh, doors already in place. And there's a magnet on the inside just with some green stuff and a magnet on the inside of the door. Anyways, bad at black here over all of the, the metal areas and uh, as well on here and the, the skids and all that. Um, Telerin flesh uh, on all the uh, the servitor fleshy bits. It's the only flesh on this whole model. And uh, blood red on the uh, the driver here. So he's actually going to end up being a little bit of a different color red. But that's okay because he'll stand out and you won't really see much of him anyways. 
Uh, now what I'm doing here is uh, I've got the servitor basically done. I did a couple blue cables on him and I'm gluing this uh, this on the inside. Um, you can see a little bit of it looks like white glue. What it actually is is this micro crystal clear and I, I picked that up at the uh, local hobby shop. Um, train, trains or hobbies and models, that kind of st store will stock this stuff. Uh, you could also use white glue. Just don't use super glue um, because it'll fog up the window and it'll get that white, uh, crusty sort of look to it. Plastic glue, if you're really careful, will work. But uh, this this went on without a problem. I just put it on with a brush. It's water soluble, and there was no issue. So there's uh, that guy. I'll put in there. Um, I did a little bit of uh, flesh highlights on him, uh, just with elf flesh um, and a uh, ogren flesh wash. Okay, now uh, some more details on this guy. So I painted this panel in front of him black, as well as this couple little details on there. And uh, that shoulder pad got the, the blue as well, so it's just Mordian blue. It's going to get a little ice blue edge highlight. Um, Adaptus Battle Gray on uh, a little bit of highlighting, and as well on that, that gear thing on his shoulder. And, uh, the, okay, this is actually going to be painted later, but just to show you, this is a base coat of cloud gray dark gray some gold bits so there's a couple uh, aquilas or aquilas or whatever you want to call them on the thing but also these are going to be gold so that's ancient bronze from reaper and it's going to get a devil and mud wash following that uh, a little bit of chaos black here on uh, the top parts of the bolters and uh, doing the same thing with the the crystal clear on this as well uh, you can see some of the glue there this thing here, uh, I didn't bother painting any of the detail on there, but uh, it was a little tricky actually to get this slid underneath it because I, I, I guess I glued this on a little bit uh, too tight. Uh, still working on the gold there, and uh, you can see that this is on here now. I glued that whole panel on. Um, the way that I, I airbrushed it all, the colors match nicely, so. Uh, it actually fits on there quite nicely, and you got to make sure that you you watch out for the little uh, instrument panel at the front. Make sure it still rotates. So we're coming together nicely. Uh, this is uh, in there now. It rotates. Uh, in order to take it off, you actually have to be able to get these uh, these panels off of the, the protectors for the guns. Um, otherwise, it won't rotate past this back part here, uh, which you need to do in order to take it apart. Just a note: if you're not uh, glue or if you're not magnetizing the guns on, you probably won't be able to take that thing off. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. I have all the gold done here, uh, all the silver bits done. I've glued on the the, the um, uh, glass bits there, uh, and uh, now I just need to do these uh, blood angel symbols and some weathering. So for the weathering. There's the other side. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, going to build up some paint chips. So starting off with Vomit Brown, and I'm just going around all of the sort of leading edges of things in some random areas and painting it on um, a solid color but kind of a jagged edge. So trying to give it a bit of an uneven edge anywhere that I think that there might be a paint chip. And so that's just uh, a solid, a th kind of a thicker layer than you would think uh, so that it's not transparent or anything like that. Really, you're only going to end up seeing the edge of that, so it's not critical that the whole thing is uh, is on there thick. You don't want it too thick, of course, but you want it pretty uh, opaque. And there's the other side. Okay, so next thing I'm doing here is uh, a little stormy gray. So that's darker than Adaptus Battle Gray, not by much, but a little bit darker. And I'm painting inside all of the vomit brown areas. And so I'm using the same paintbrush, so it has a, it's not a great paintbrush. It's got a bit of a rough edge on it. But uh, what it means is I can get kind of the same contours there with little effort. And uh, this goes on a lot faster than the Vomit Brown. Uh, just because you already have everything laid out and you're just trying to make it uneven and inside the lines. It's actually pretty easy. Continuing on there, you can see it all coming together. Okay, yeah, lots of various areas there. Uh, actually, this is a, the the silver's on there now, and there we go. Hone steel. So hone steel. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to get again inside the uh, 
inside the, the gray areas and make sure that I get all of the sharp edges with a good line of silver on it. And that honed steel also got uh, dry brushed on the engines and these uh, thrusters and, and struts and all that sort of stuff. Um, doing the, uh, the headlights there, a little bit of tau ochre, um, nothing fancy, no extra highlights. Okay, so the black areas, so that includes the, the bolters, uh, just a little of Adaptus Battle Gray on the lines there. And for the plasma uh, bit there, it's a Mordaian Blue base coat, a little bit of ice blue on there, and uh, skull white, which is what, basically the skull white is just along the edge, and the ice blue goes down, and then the, the Mordaian Blue at the bottom. Okay, so now the Blood Angel symbols. Um, all I'm doing is just doing a, an overbrush of misty gray. So that started with cloudy gray. So this is just misty gray, kind of overbrushed everything, um, and just running the brush over with a with the right amount of paint, and that's all there is to that. Uh, hard to tell on this here, but this is just ghost white, just along the edges, and uh, I, I picked out all of the bottoms of these wings here. And now I'm ready to do the, the gem stone in the middle. So again, Reaper, uh, this is burgundy wine. So that's just a deep purple going in there. Uh, the next one here, violet red. And that's just kind of the bottom half of the teardrop. Kind of angling it as if the light's coming here. And that's the bottom part there, kind of looking a little bit lighter. And then the, the pale violet just along that bottom edge. So just a, kind of a half moon shape just right there and then I blend it just a little bit there so it's not a sharp edge and then finally a little bit of a white dot um, opposite to where that highlight is now I had to do a bit of detail on the base here so I've got uh, my usual coffee grinds with uh, scorched brown and be still brown uh, dry brush a um, little bit of the uh, stone these are um, these are from the base, Warhammer Basing Kit. It's just pieces of slate, and they're painted with the uh, the Stone Triad from Reaper. And then this is a Battle Wagon uh, Ram, a front piece from a Battle Wagon Kit that I'm not going to be using because i got lots of Def Rollers. So uh, it just got a coat of uh, aged pewter and then rust brown. Um, I painted this all scorched brown first, and then so I did a heavy dry brush of aged pewter, and then stippled a little bit of uh, rust brown all over the place. And here we go, we're all done. So let's walk around. Oh, one area I did forget to tell you the paints for. These kind of uh, instrument uh, gems or optics, whatever, I did those a green. So that's just uh, uh, Dark Angels green, Snot green, and Scorpion green with a little white dot at the top. Same idea as the uh, Blood Angel symbol, but the greens. So let's walk around here. And obviously this is on the flying stand. We'll show you a couple more pictures later of the different areas. Really neat model. A little bit weird proportions depending what angle you look at it. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to put these landing gear down. I didn't love those. Um, but uh, I figure if I'm only going to have one of these in my arm, I'm going to want to be able to take it off the stand. Maybe if I do another one, I'll do it without those legs. And I didn't put any decals on this either. Just thought it'd be uh, good the way it was. And uh, actually, if you go back one here, you see there's no uh, no hurricane bolters there now. There's a little magnet on the inside of the door, and uh, I cut the top of the hurricane bolters to fit those things that are in the door, and that's why there's a plastic panel that goes above it. And so that's this plastic piece here is what I put on just to cover up that cutting and that just there's a magnet on the inside of there with a bit of green stuff to space it out from the back. And there's a hurricane bolters on the other side as well. And there's what we look like on the stand. Um, pretty cool model. Again, it would be nice if this was uh, maybe a ball joint in there so you could angle a little bit more because um, it's pretty squared off, but uh, still pretty cool. Looks really neat in my display case with all the rest of my Blood Angels. 
And here we are without the stand. Um, I also made this door uh, openable and just a bit of silver on there. There is a back door and you'll see that in a minute. I just glued that in place because I figured it would just be a pain in the neck if it uh, fell off. It doesn't have pegs in it, it's just kind of a clips on. It would rotate but I, f I figured it was going to just fall off every time I moved it. So these here rotate back and forth, and those are just force fit in there, the, the multi Um There's a couple other weapons options that you get in the kit. Um, these here rotate as well as this, So, and these thrusters, which you'll see in a minute. There's my driver there. It's hard to get a good picture with the without any glare, but uh, it's a nice detail. You can still see them. There's my servitor in the back. And side view. Now underneath the back, here's that the the rear hatchway that I glued in place. You can kind of you can't really see, but those just clip in there. Uh, I I glued it. But this is meant to be the the grappling uh, hook for the dreadnought. It's the same as the Magna grapple um, on the Furioso dreadnought. It looks a lot. The, well, it looks exactly the same. And this piece here actually is just a piece that's glued on. So I don't know if that was an afterthought by GW or uh, what the case is because you it's not an uh, upgrade you pay for, so it's always part of the kit. But anyways, um, yeah, I just painted it silver. And there's the, there's the spot where your flying sand goes in. Now if you were to take these landing gear out, it would basically, this piece here would just sit up flush against there and this would flush in there. You just basically, there's a piece in there you take right out and that just glues straight in. And these legs here, you just wouldn't glue those there, you'd glue that straight on. Okay, I think this is the one where we're going to see these move. Yeah, there you go. So those just rotate a little bit back and forth. Uh, there's what you look like with the, uh, the missile launcher at the front. Uh, cyclone missile launcher option, that's it. And what it is, a little pegs in there that slot in where those multi melters were. So you just pull the multi melt out and that sits in there. It's a pretty snug fit, but you probably want to magnetize that. And there we go, with the whole Blood Angel crew. Uh, I can transport, I think, 12 guys uh, and a dreadnought, or six assault marines um, instead of the 12 guys. They count two for one, and same with Terminators. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And uh, pick up your Storm Raven and uh, see you next time.